Hey, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a sales engineer. No, I, I do help sell stuff. No, no, I am. I am in sales, but I'm not a salesperson. I'm a sales engineer. No, I don't just do demos. No, I will not smash the <laughs> What's up, SE family? Welcome. My name is Ramzi Majraba. I am not addicted to coffee. And I am your host for today. So I get a lot of these questions. What, what is a sales engineer? And I've already made a video about it, so I'm not sure why people still ask me, but hey, people still ask me. So I'm gonna take a different approach to talk about sales engineer. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the three core objectives of a sales engineer, what sales engineering isn't, the differences between sales and sales engineering, and keeping that brief, and is sales engineering even right for you? Because I hate to break it to you, not everybody is born to be a sales engineer. So let's start from the top. What are the three core aspects of sales engineering? And hopefully that will help define what a sales engineer is and what they do and what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So the first thing that we do is we meet with a lot of customers and more importantly, is we try to understand the business problem. We're gonna dig deep into that in a bit. But the second thing we do is we then solve that business problem using technology. And the third thing we do is convince the customer in a way, in a non-sleazy way, in a very honest way, that our solution is the best solution for that. So let's dig into this a little bit. The first thing that we do is meet with customers to understand a business problem. It's very hard to solve, do point two and point three, solve and then show that you solve without understanding the business problem. Because at that point, you just, you can, you're solving somebody else's problem that they have nothing to do with. In order to do that, we have to actually meet with a customer, whether it's virtually as we do today or in person as I used to do yesterday or yeah, yesteryear, last year we meet with customers and we ask a lot of questions. And if the customer is happy to have you there, they'll probably answer a lot of questions. If not, you might have to get more creative in terms of storytelling, whiteboarding, active listening, answering a lot of questions. And all of those, the whole point of storytelling, whiteboarding is to gather more information about the customer problem. Customers don't generally like to talk to salespeople and sales engineers. Well, maybe sales engineers a little bit more, but to salespeople, they don't like to talk to them. But we're like doctors. We like to ask a lot of questions and understand what the problem is. It's hard to prescribe solution if we don't know what the problem is. So another thing that we do as part of understanding the business problem is build trust with the customers. We answer truthfully. We do not lie. Once you lie and they know it, that you lied and most people can tell you've lost all trust and they will probably not buy from you. I mean, they already have a hard time trusting the salespeople for other reasons that I shall not get into, whether it's uh, justified or not, most likely not, but they generally trust sales engineers and you have the option to build that trust, share that trust with your salesperson. So you have a big responsibility as a sales engineer to continue that trust, to build that relationship so that when you wait, when you share a story about how you've helped other customers, they don't think that that's a load of bull versus, oh yeah, like if you solve that other person's problem, if he says that, I believe them. So that's a big thing about meeting with customers. The second thing we need to do is solve their problem. So we have a set of technology, whether you work for Splunk, AWS, Salesforce, or some startup, you have a set of technology which may or may not solve the customer's problem as a whole. So you need to solve the customer's problem using these limitations, whether it's the customer's budget, whether it's the technology that you have or the technology you can create by the time they want the solution. And the fun part about this is as part of solving the problem, you have to explain some of it to the salesperson so they can talk about it as well in the way they see fit with the customers if they meet one-on-one -on -one or one-to-many without you being in the room. And then the third thing that we do is help the customer understand that we're the best solution for them. And we do that throughout the meeting. It's not just one meeting to convince them. It's every time you open your mouth, you're actually either proving that you're solving the problem or disproving that you solve the problem. So in the discovery call, you can help them build a vision. And then when you do a demo with them, you can prove that their vision is right. So we do a lot of discovery calls, a lot of demos. There isn't just one meeting to show the customer and convince the customer that we solved their problem. It's the whole process, the whole sales process from the first time you meet them to until you get the purchase order, you're trying to show them that you actually solved their problem. If you say something in the discovery call that implies that you cannot solve the problem, they may never meet with you again. 
you have to show them that you can solve the problem. You have to help them build that vision and prove that you can fix that vision. Show differentiators between you and the competitors and show ROI, whether it's the time you give back, the personnel hours, the money. A lot, a lot of times it comes down to money. So yeah, there's a lot of things that we do as sales engineers. And I just put it in like three small categories, three large categories, and we can get in depth into every single one which we can do in other videos, but these are the three core things that we do, which entail many other things. So what's the difference between us and salespeople? Well, the biggest difference is we focus on technology. The salespeople focus on the financial aspect or the commercial aspect, which is a fancy word for financial. And we're working together as a team. Salespeople don't have the technical know-how to solve the problem technically, but they can help solve the problem financially. If they want to buy your product and it's too expensive, maybe the salesperson can help them on a payment plan. Whatever it is, that's their job. And also their job is to negotiate after you've done what you need to do as a sales engineer and close the, close the deal. There's a big difference between sales and sales engineering. Sales engineers usually come around in the middle of a call or a middle of an opportunity and the sales people are the beginning and the bookend where they find the opportunity, close the opportunity. They're involved in the middle because it is, in the end, their commission. They're involved throughout. They want to make sure everything's on track. The SE is doing the demo in a timely fashion. The SE is available to answer questions. They're, they're a lot like project managers from when the SE gets involved to the, when the SE stops being involved, if they ever stop being involved. And then they try to close the deal. So what are some words that do not describe sales engineers? Gophers, assistance, sales support. I hate that word because people use it. Not many people use the other two, but our thought as these are thought of as gophers and assistance or sales support, a free resource. We're not, we're not customer support and we're definitely not sales. We're in sales, but we're not sales. The SE is basically the CTO to the salesperson's CEO persona. They are in charge of the business. We help them get the business done. We help them take care of the business from a technical perspective. Think of us as Steve Wozniak to Steve Jobs. We just help them get stuff done. I've worked with a couple of sales engineers who bombed miserably and went on to be great at other roles. Just because you don't do well as a sales engineer, doesn't mean you're a bad person or you're not smart. It just means you're not suited for it. If you're not curious, if you don't care how things work, you just want to sell it. Maybe you should be a salesperson versus a SE. Do you enjoy working with people? You don't have to be an extrovert or an introvert or anything like that. It's just, do you enjoy working with people? If, if you're an introvert, can you work one-on-one -on -one with people? Maybe you should find a role that helps you work one-on-one -on -one with customers. If you're an extrovert and you like a big crowd, you can do that too. You can always find a way, but if you hate talking to people in general, maybe you should, this should not be the role for you. Are you okay with customers pooping on you, basically? I'm using baby words because I have a new baby. I've had to sit through an hour long conversation with a customer where they're just talking crap about my product and then they bought. But I had to sit through that. It wasn't fun for me. It wasn't fun for the salesperson. I'm not sure it was fun for the customer, but hey, we went through it and we came out stronger at the other end as a customer and, as, and sales partnership. But it wasn't a pleasant experience. Are you able to sit through that? Where I've seen most SE struggle is when they work for large companies that have a lot of products in their portfolio and trying to understand everything, feeling overwhelmed with everything. I, I saw one person burn out really quick within four months. He actually, we did a mock demo. And the first thing he stated when he started the demo, we're looking at the most complicated product that our company has, which is not a good way to start a demo. Good thing it was a mock demo, but it, it's indicative that the fact that he was overwhelmed, where if he starts a demo like that, where he was a great SE in other companies and he continues to be a great SE for other companies except for the company that we work for. So are you able to handle a lot of different products, sell a lot of different products, even if you're not the expert in them? That's for a generalist SE mainly. If you're a specialist, are you able to focus on one product or technology and try to sell that and not have broad knowledge of whatever products is in your portfolio, in the company's portfolio at least? 
are you able to work with a quota or have a commission? So have a variable salary. And there is a misconception that people don't want commission because they want to be safe. They want their, their salary to be all secure. But I used to work for a company where I got paid A, amount, let's say amount A. I moved to company B as a sales engineer where my base was B, which was a lot larger than A. And then I had commission on top of that. Wouldn't that be better? If you're looking to move into sales engineering, just negotiate a higher base or a base that's equal to your current base so that whatever commission you get is just gravy or better yet, just negotiate for a higher base to begin with. But that's what I did. And most of the SEs I work with, that's what they do. Or better yet, if you're trying to get into sales engineering and you want to negotiate a base, try to negotiate the base higher than when you currently get paid. That's what I did. And that's what I tell aspiring SEs that I work with. Are you ready to work with salespeople who might be a little bit of uh, a-holes? Salespeople are, are people. It's in the title. They're people. And some are very nice. Some are not. Some are pushy. Some are laid back. Are you ready to work with different personalities like that? That may affect your commission, may affect the way you enjoy your career. I've helped SEs who had account managers that were just bullies and they had to deal with that. And I've worked with account managers that were great. Two of my account managers, one was very laid back and very nice. And the other one was a pushy salesperson, but was fair. So you get the best, you get the best and worst of both worlds, but you're highly compensated for it too. Are you ready to gently tap the like button? But that has nothing to do with sales engineering. Are you ready to work long hours? Potentially travel. Are you ready to work long hours and potentially travel? And sometimes excessive beer drinking. That comes with part of the job. If you can't drink for religious or dietary or personal reasons that you don't want to drink, it's fine. But most of the SEs that I know drink or enjoy a good drink. I am not much of a drinker. I used to be a drinker, but now I cannot hold my leg. So I, I, I've been talking for quite a bit about sales engineering. At least I feel like it's quite a bit. Let me know below. If someone asked you to describe sales engineering, how would you do that? Or whether it's sales engineering, pre-sales, pre-sales engineering, solution architecting, solution consulting, whatever it is, let me know below and I will talk to you next time.